they are professional students. You are welcome to another session of comparative management. In this session, our objective, our mission is to look at a comparative approach to management and administration. And our main objective as follows. At the end of this session, our listener should be able to define and use correctly all the key words such as planning, organizing, staffing, leading, communicating, controlling, and coordinating. That is one. Two, we must be able, that is our listeners are supposed to be able to explain the concept of planning, the process involved in planning, and benefit as well as peaceful of planning. Our discussion will also take us to the discussion of the basic rudiments of organizing as a functional area of management. Our listeners are supposed to be able to draw distinction among staffing, leading, leadership, functions that modern day managers perform. Not only that, we also show a clear understanding of the use of communication within an organization. More so, we try to explain and make our listener understand the word control. And lastly, we discuss coordinating function of the manager. These are the areas that we look at under this session. So this is our session. We try to, or it tries to introduce you to element of management and administration. Not only that, the achievement of organization objective is also basic to all organization, whether public or private organization. The key personnel in profit enterprises are known as manager, while those in public enterprises are referred to as administrator. You know, the key personnel in private organization is known as what? Manager. But that of public is known as what? Administrator. All together. Now, And the major attribute connecting both the administrator and the manager is the element of management and administration, which is known as management process. Both the manager and the administrator are connected to their, are connected together with the element of management and what administration, which we tag as management process. Are we following? If that is the case, the management process we just said is a series of steps taken by managers and top administrators to get their work done. And the process as follows, we have planning, followed by organizing. After that, we have staffing, we have leading, we have controlling and coordinating. So, and not only that, the goal that's supposed to be paramount. Let me come again. I said the first goal must be established. You know, that's what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is that when you want to manage, the first thing to do is to set your goal. So you must establish the goal for the organization. And the plan must be developed to achieve these goals. After you have uh, developed the goal and the plan to achieve the goal have been set, the manager must now organize people and resources into a logical and efficient, well oiled machine. That is what? That is capable of accomplishing the goal. All together to accomplish the goal that have been chosen. And after you have done that, the manager must now lead employee in such a way that they are motivated to work effectively to achieve the goals set by the manager. And finally, the manager must maintain adequate control to ensure that organization is working steadily towards its goal. What I just said now, if you could listen properly, you see that the 
main four process we have in management are planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. These are the four basic that we we have. Are you following? So that's them um, on that. Now let's look at this one after the other. What are our main process? The first thing is planning. And planning is the most basic managerial function, and it is very critical to management. Planning involves both what is to be done and how it is to be done. Whenever there is a gap between where we are and where we want to be in future, there is need to bridge that gap. So anytime there is a gap from where we are and where we want to go, we we'll bridge it. And it is observed that from the knowledge of principle of management, that planning involves defining the organization objective or goals, establishing an overall strategy of achieving these goals, and developing a comprehensive hierarchy of plans to integrate and coordinate activities. The planning also covers the whole process of determining the, the purpose or what purpose to pursue and the means of attaining them, as well as mechanism for monitoring results. And according to Lawa in 2009, Nine. This our great scholar defines planning as the process of setting objectives and finding various ways of achieving the stated objectives. That is a simple meaning of planning according to the one in 2009. And not only that, another scholar, which is known as Anasi. Known as Onasi. Uh, sorry, Azazi. Not Onasi. Azazi. 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 In 1991, define planning as a process of determining what purpose to pursue and the means of attaining them as well as the mechanism for monitoring results. Planning is the formal process of choosing an organization mission and overall goals for the short run and long run. Devising the fictional departmental and even the fictional goals and allocating resources to achieve the various goals strategies and tactics. And according to Akhov in 1985, planning is anticipated decision making. Is what planning is anticipated decision making. It look at five W and one I. Sorry, five W and one H. The first W is what to do, when to do, where to do, why it should be done, who does it, and how to do it. That is a, according to Ankhov in 1985 when he was describing planning. He said planning is an anticipated decision making that look at what it look at five Ws and one age. This therefore means that planning is thinking ahead by manager that leads to performance improvement of officers and indeed the entire organization. That is according to few scholars we want to mention here. Now, how do we classify planning? When we are talking of planning classification, the first we have planning as former or informer, meaning we can classify planning to be former or informer. And former planning is an organized and well-developed system of planning. Specific objectives are defined and written down for organizational members to see and follow. That is under former planning. As a result of this, it's a system involving clear and well laid down procedures. That is a former planning. And the second one is informal planning. 
informal planning is based on the past experience of the manager and nothing is written down for anyone to see and follow and there is little or no sharing of objective with others in the organization that is a formal or informal planning although the formal planning system has its merit it has its merit but we can't rule out that it is time wasting it is time wasting because in today's uh, turbulent and dynamic environment for you to be ready to follow a later procedure might not be all going well for the business so the information planning system on the other hand lack objectivities and continuity because of its nature what i'm trying to say that if formal planning is time wasting informal planning is also what it lacks objectivity and continuity because of its nature and according to robbins and Carlton in 1996 however these people classify planning in terms of the scope time frame specificity and frequency of its use and that's why they bring this uh, table when we are talking of scope we have planning to be in form of strategic planning or tactical planning we are talking of the area this planning cover and we are talking of time frame it could be long time or short time and not only that we have directional and specific planning under specificity and lastly the frequency of use we could have single use plan or standing plan and we are talking of strategic plan strategic plan is done at the corporate level of organization and this applies to the whole organization by establishing its overall objectives and seeking to position the organization in terms of its specific environment this planning method covers a longer period of time that is strategic planning we are talking of tactical planning this type of planning involves the selection of the means of attaining the specific objective tactical planning assumes the existence objectives and tends to cover a shorter time period and on that time frame where we say we have short term and long term short term plan is a plan which does not cover more than one year and long term is a plan that extends beyond five years and when we are talking of specificity specific as in specific plan and directional plan specific plan has clearly defined objectives it leaves no room for interpretation and ambiguity specific procedures and schedules of activities to reach objectives are actually established and direction plan on its own is a kind of flexible plan that set out general guidelines it is better to use this planning method when uncertainty is high because it does not disclose a manager's specific objective or course of action and in the area of usage or frequency of uses we have single use plan and standing plan under single use plan this is a one-time plan that is specifically designed to meet the objectives or the needs of a unique situation and it is created in response to known response to, to non-programmed decisions that managers make for example merger and acquisition and introduction of new product these are the things that manager does seldomly not every time so it's a kind of plan or the kind of plan that is supposed to use to attack that is a single use plan when this is not something that is routine in nature just use it and abandon it and we are talking of standing plan standing plan is a kind of plan that is created in response to a program or routine decision that manager make it provides guidance for activities repeatedly performed in an organization. For example, when it has to do with the replenish of uh, 
from a stock in the company. So that is a about that. When we are talking of uh, as we are going on the same uh, topic, which is planning, let's look at the process involved in planning. What are the planning process? Now, when we are talking of planning process, the planning steps or process involves one, determination of an organization mission, goals and objective, strengths, weaknesses, opportunity and trends. That is a, the first one. After you have determined the mission and objective and goals, and you have also, you have also determined the strength, the weakness, the opportunity and trends of organization, or you have analyzed it. The next thing is to formulate this strategy, which we call formulation of strategy. And the last one is implementation of strategy. And that's according to our uh, CFM bacteria. Now, what are the benefits? of planning. Planning has certain benefits. According to what people say, he who fails to plan, plans to fail, is a general slogan in management. You should note that planning has certain merits. Among them is one, it gives a sense of direction and purpose to an organization. It enables an organization to take advantage of opportunities and contain trends in the operating environment. More so, it provides awareness for a changing environment so that an organization can adapt better to it. It also helps an organization to concentrate resources on an area of best potential. And more so, it assists management to identify a method of ascertaining healthy financial benefits and other resources which can boost organization capability. And it also provides an organization with criteria for measuring corporate and employee performance. It enables management to take calculated business risk and think ahead. It also helps to coordinate managers of different functional areas of an organization to ensure they all move in the same direction. Not only that, planning also helps an organization to achieve steady growth and development. And lastly, it helps to pick up the pace for a weak and tired organization. Those are the benefits that we stand to gain when we plan an organization. And aside this, there is also pitfall. We are talking about pitfall in planning. Although the importance of planning cannot be emphasized, many organizations still do not achieve the results because of the pitfall in planning. What are the pitfalls? The first one is that too much time and effort are expended by top management on current problems, leaving little or no time for long-range planning. That is one. Another one is failure to develop meaningful and realistic goals and objectives. Failure to develop a realistic goals and objectives. And also, there is lack of commitment to planning and the belief that top management can delegate the planning function to a planner and as well personal inertia to changes brought about by planning activities. We call Palestine inertia that is lukewarm. Inertia means what? Lukewarm attitude. And also part of the thing that make planning to be defaulted is the too much formality and lack of flexibility in the system, which in the creativity. We also have the failure to involve line manager in the process of planning. And as well, there is inadequate or lack of necessary resources for planning implementation. We also have another pitfall, which is over the alliance of top management on reflective thinking as well as experience. There is also a failure to create an organizational climate that is conducive and is not resistant to change. And finally, there's failure to use plan as standard 
evaluating managerial performance. These are the pitfall of planning that makes planning to be somehow in an organization. Thank <laughs> you.